Hey guys, what's up everybody, Sando here. And today I'll be testing the newest and most probably the most interesting THX Acromatic Audio Amplifier by the name of SMSL SP400. It costs 630 bucks, but it has something that no other THX amplifier is having inside and I'm not about its preamp section. There are plenty of things to like about it, but uh, I do still have several complaints about it, which I'll mention in a minute. Let's check first how it looks, uh, what makes it tick, and then how it sounds, shall we? Build quality wise, this is the nicest SMSL unit that I've tested so far. It has a very good weight to it, it feels balanced and in hand. It has pretty much the same square surface as my Benchmark HPA4. Maybe it was intentional, as it can be considered as a direct competitor to it at a much lower price point. There are four rubber feet beneath it, taking the shape of the unit. Those are bigger and deeper compared to the ones on the SH9, so it will not lean to any side as it happens on that one. I find the build quality really nice, but still I have one big complaint that bothers the hell out of me. Its top plate is covered with tempered glass, and while it gives a very positive first impression, immediately after touching it, it becomes obvious that it wasn't the brightest idea. It's a fingerprint and dust particles magnet, and a simple metal top cover would look the same, but will resist a lot more use and abuse. As for controls, SP400 has a clean front panel with just an LCD screen on the left, two headphone outputs in the middle, one being a balanced 4-pin XLR output, and on the right there is your volume knob that also works as a menu navigator. On the back you can see two analog inputs, a balanced XLR and a single-ended RCA one, there is also a balanced XLR output, just in case you'll want to use it as a preamp, and on the right there is an universal AC inlet. As for the tech inside it, SP400 is the fourth THX888 equipped headphone amplifier on the market, but the absolute first one to have four modules instead of two. As such, it is the first true balanced input to output amplifier having these particular modules, so I should definitely hear an improvement over the SH9, and who knows, maybe over HPA4 as well. The analog section of SP400 is looking exactly like a double version of SH9, and as such it offers double the power. More exactly, 12 freaking watts into a 16 ohm load. All that power will mean nothing if there isn't a wide bandwidth to deliver all that instantly to your headphones. Its bandwidth extends from 0.1 Hz to over 500 kHz, meaning that SP400 will deliver an instant amplitude and should have a perfect phase accuracy over the entire audio bandwidth. SMSL used the same ladder of analog relays that are sitting in their SH9, more exactly 9 relays for the headphone arm section and another 2 for its preamp section. And that's a high-end volume control in my book. Ok everybody, time to hit some eardrums. In terms of sound performance, as we all know THX released several achromatic audio amplifier modules, and from them all 888 modules sounded the best to me. Uh, as those headphone amplifiers that had those modules uh, sounded simply bolder, more visceral, more impactful, and much better in terms of bass delivery. Uh, those were slightly more detailed sounding and also more layered, they had more air around each and every note. Uh, that's basically the sole reason why uh, Benchmark HP4 stood by my side for almost two years now, no matter what. Um, and in some ways uh, SP400 is uh, reminding me quite a lot about the sound of the HPA4. And since it has a double current delivery compared to this one, it worked even better with harder to dry headphones like uh, Haifa Vara for example. Benchmark HPA4 and the rest of the THX Mafia were simply in the clipping territory with headphones such as Haifa Mansus Vara. Uh, they were simply unable to sustain a bass note, more exactly a 20Hz bass note. And it's a little bit painful saying this, but uh, SP400 is a much better device at uh, controlling 
and driving headphones like Hyphomas Uzvara. It never entered its protection mode, it was never clipping and the dynamics were always sky high. While it is not as precise, not as super uber detailed as a benchmark HP A4 is, it still has double the power and that was immediately felt with headphones such as Odyssey LCD4 or um, Hyphema Suzvara. I knew that HP A4 was controlling well the drivers of some of the best headphones there is, but SP400 was doing that much easier, so gracefully, so easily, like it was absolutely nothing for it. HP A4 is no slouch and it's still one of the best uh, I have ever heard. But with some particular headphones, SP400 worked better at less than 5 times the price of HP A4. Quite impressive, isn't it? In terms of noise floor, out of all headphone amplifiers that passed through these hands, only a very small portion, a very handful of amplifiers worked exceptionally well uh, with ultra sensitive IMs by offering a pitch black background. And the biggest majority of those amplifiers had either THX modules or NFCA modules of topping. But of course, the, there were exceptions. Uh, other amplifiers like Sparkos Labs Aries, like uh, Aun S7 Pro, that also works exceptionally well with IMs. Uh, first attempts by SMSL like SH8 and also SP200 failed at delivering a noiseless performance as those are simply, were simply rising the, the noise levels pretty badly. But starting with SMSL SH9, they simply invested a lot more time in the research and development. And the same can be said about the SP400. At my usual listening level of around 90 dB, uh, no matter the selected gain, there was simply an absolute silence between passages with the most sensitive IEMs in my possession, the FIO FI9 and all other IEMs basically performed the same and all I've heard was the sound of silence and simply nothing more. Uh, there is no point in trying uh, other IEMs, portable headphones, desktop headphones because all those would perform absolutely the same. At its lowest volume position the sound is not leaking as it happened on the topping A50S and there are plenty of volume steps until it reaches your desired position so I'm happy to recommend it as an IEM friendly amplifier. As for power output, brace yourselves as this will be a slightly longer chapter. And being the most powerful THX amplifier has its perks because you can drive pretty much any headphones you want with flying colors. Yes, including the notorious Haifa Mansus Vara. You can add the Abyss 1266 in here as well. And Odyssey LCD4 felt like a child's play for it. As you can imagine, all other headphones like portable headphones, dynamic headphones, desktop planner magnetic headphones uh, were driven to their fullest and there is nothing more to say about it. I felt an absolute control over the drivers, uh, lightning fast notes sounded exactly as they should, dynamics were pressing the gas pedal and SP400 was keeping up with all that. With all that said, there is one thing that I wish SMSL did completely different and that it's uh, gain levels. There is very little difference between low, medium and high gain and while it might not sound like a huge con to you, it's a huge drawback, it's a huge con with something like Hyphomansus Vara. And when you put it side by side with SH9 that has exactly half the power of SP200, SP200 doesn't feel as having twice the power. It doesn't feel much more powerful actually to be more precise and let me give you some examples. While feeding a signal of 84 dB I am getting these results. With Odyssey LCD4 SH9 will sit at 57 volume position on high gain and that equals to a volume of 55 on SP400. With Haifa Mansus Vara SH9 will sit at 78 volume position and that equals to a volume of 76 on SP400. Considering that SP400 offers 12 watts and SH9 only 6 watts, I expected a much bigger difference and the culprit seems to be the long gain amplifier design of both devices. From their user manuals, SP400 has a max gain of 11.6 dB and SH9 has a max gain of 10 dB. And if you are upgrading from SH9 to SP400 and you don't feel the increase of power, that is normal behavior but still you should hear the improvements in terms of layering, uh, easiness and dynamics which are obvious from the start. As MSL, if you are watching this and you are already planning on increasing the gain settings on the SP400 and that would happen very soon, 
I would personally send you a thank you card and some homemade cookies. You know you want those. In terms of detail retrieval and transparency, by now I have heard tens of headphone amplifiers. And from them all, I still have the most respect for those that are not staying in the way of the acoustic signal. With an amplifier like this, it's so much easier doing duck reviews, doing headphone reviews, because I'll be listening to the chain, uh, acoustic chain, and not to the amplifier itself. So no matter the song that is being playing, uh, I'll be listening only to the truth and to nothing else. If what you hear is not to your liking, you can blame the alcohol, you can blame your DAC, you can blame your headphone, uh, you can even blame your music, but not the amplifier itself, because it simply disappears from your chain. Living with HPA4 by Benchmark for two years now, I'm not that easily impressed when it comes to things like uh, transparency and details. Uh, but I do think that SP400 sounds basically the same, uh, almost as transparent as HPA4. It can easily unearth the smallest nuances in your music, uh, call them as you want, uh, micro details and so on. And since transparency goes hand in hand with details, it was simply a child's play focusing on any note that I wanted uh, in a track, be it in front of me, being to my right or to my left, that was really very easy to do. SP400 is a hell of a transparent amplifier. Uh, it will let you be the conductor in your tune, so you can choose on what you want to focus and what's less important. And I can go on and on about how transparent and detailed SP400 can be, as there is no other way to describe the sound of it. As for the transit response, my favorite part to talk about, SP400 feels like a very fast wild horse that always challenges the speed of your source and also of your headphones. It goes wild, it goes really fast, it kicks and it kicks really hard, especially with uh, high dynamic range tracks. So expect simply a lightning start and stop of the drivers, especially with electronica and with uh, modern music. And lower tier uh, THX amplifiers were always impressive in terms of speed, but not so much when it came to ultimate impact and slam, mostly because they were quite limited in terms of power outp output, hence uh, moving less air down low in the, in the lowest octaves. But SP400 is a completely different beast with uh, 12 watts on top. Uh, bass notes uh, were moving absolutely more air and that created an impression of a higher sound pressure level. A high power output always leads to a much better sensation of slam and impact uh, into the eardrums. Um, this is exactly where SP400 feels quite bossy, so quite powerful and really impressive. Uh, I still use on a daily basis a Flux Lab Acoustics FA10 that has 16 watts on top. Uh, when I want to rock out really hard uh, with planar magnetic headphones. And SP400 almost matches the engagement factor of the FA10. And that uh, is amazing to hear and experience firsthand. Finally, and THX amplifier that carries more warmth, more body, uh, that sounds fast, but also visceral and engaging. Soundstage and SLAM are most probably the biggest changes compared to SH9, as SP400 is simply wider sounding, bolder sounding, slightly harder uh, slamming. Uh, the difference is not that huge, so certainly not twice as the price might suggest, but it's there, uh, there is no question about it. Uh, SP400 is also a quad mono design, uh, meaning that it has a close to zero channel crosstalk, and that left a huge mark on its sound staging capabilities in a very, very good way. There is simply more air around, uh, it sounds more 3D, uh, wrapping entirely my entire body with musical notes, and pair it with high performance open back headphones and SP400 will simply spread its wings. Uh, in my SH9 review, I have mentioned that I really want a THX amplifier that will have a much higher capacitance, a much higher power output, so it will not limit the sound stage uh, in a bad way. And it seems that I have found that amplifier. High-end tube and hybrid amplifiers are still having a small upper hand when it comes to layering and the stage size, but the gap is not a huge one as it happened before. As for the frequency response, the sub bass is impressive even from the first notes, so it easily reaches those 20 Hz notes. It can easily sustain a much longer bass note. And if you love clean, undistorted bass uh, with layers and sub layers of it, uh, SP400 will easily show them to you. 
Mid bass is equally super neutral, so super clean sounding without uh, being overemphasized. Uh, there aren't any drops or rises in here. Just a perfect rendition of it. So it's something to be heard with headphones like uh, Odyssey LCD4 and hi Suzvara, as it was always a very impactful sounding. I consider that its mid-range performance is a power-ending shift uh, because it was never thin sounding, it was never lifeless, boring sounding at all. On the contrary, it was a little bit warmer sounding compared to the rest of THX amplifiers, even warmer compared to Benchmark HP4, which was quite unusual. Uh, it was warm, for example, with uh, older jazz tunes, which was a sli slightly warmer with uh, old rock tunes, but it was neutral with uh, something like electronica or modern tracks. It was uh, jumping from neutral to uh, warm and vice versa several times, but it was never bright, boring or lifeless sounding that never happened. Treble is also quite interesting, as I hear it quite uh, clean, uh, detailed, very sharp sounding, but it isn't a bright sounding or teeth clenching to me. It goes high and easily reaches uh, the top octave, uh, there is plenty of drive mode movement in that region, and it has a very clean leading edge, that is for sure. The best treble that I have ever heard was with THX amplifiers, and SP400 is really no different. I've also compared it with its little brother SH9 and also with my reference uh, Benchmark HPA4. But since I'm not into long and boring reviews, please check out my written review that I put below. That's a longer comparison. It's on chapter 8 and it's one click away. As for my final conclusions, I really wish uh, it had a higher gain. I really wish it had one additional XLR input. I really wish it didn't have this uh, fingerprint magnet on top. But everything else really performs uh, at pretty much the highest level that I've experienced so far with headphone amplifiers. Starting with IENs and finishing with notorious headphones like Hyphoman Suzvara, uh, SP400 was pumping a very high engagement factor, it had a very high level of detail retrieval, it offered an open wide soundstage, and it had one of the best uh, diaphragm control I've experienced with headphones. It stood shoulder to shoulder with my benchmark HPA4 and it even outclassed it on several occasions while costing about 5 times cheaper. In terms of value there isn't much to add, it's one of the best ones that are costing south of 1000 bucks. Ok guys, I hope you enjoyed my review, my full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and as usual listen to more music, be positive and I'll see you next time. Cheers guys, bye bye.